alongside it. Um, oh yeah, well, I've been in Harton Junction, near Control Tank Dock Station, and it looks like that's a special in the in the platform there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a, it looks like a and there'll be a loose couple of tree in there or whatever standing. Just well, it just passed with Burn Junction, and it looks like the the road's being set for him with a single. Uh -huh. I've said that, you know, because uh, <laughs> it looks like he's passing it, doesn't he? He does, just like he's, he's, he's leaving the passenger train standing, yeah. He's and that's, that's what I mean, but that, that, that actually was a, a mainline signal, I don't understand that, as far as I knew, I don't understand that one, right? Mm. It's funny, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a, it's, it's a lovely photograph, um, 1950s, so, yeah. Well, that's gone now. Tank Dock Station has been demolished and the metro's taken away, you know. Yeah. And that's the end of that. Oh. Right, so, moving on. You sent me four brilliant photographs of Pilo Junction. Uh, oh, you mean? With the Class 9Fs and signal box. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, that, that's not Pilo Junction, that's... Uh, that's Green Lane Junction. All right, okay. I uh, you see what they've done. They just left uh, Tyne Dock, mm -hmm. uh, and they were passing Green Lane to go on the Pond of Crossing. Right. And up the up the bank the concert. Well, I used to live in them some of them houses over the top. You can see in the background. Mm -hmm. And uh, but get and see some of the trains. And it, oh, and I was working on a lot on the railway. And of course, after I come back on the railway, I was still in the other lines, and I used to think, well. I'll get in there, I may get one of these jobs of all of me. <coughs> but I never, I never did, right? <laughs> never could. And of course, at the time I was up, the, the, the branch all closed, you see, and they lost all their jobs, them lads. Mm. Yeah, what's, what's fascinating about it, right? You, the only way to get to it is you've got to cross all those tracks. Oh, well, that's nothing, isn't it? They need to see there's hardly any traffic run there. Uh, there's only a couple of trains, isn't there? Mm. Not as bad as their uh, number three one at the Dodger. You were looking at the where the points were there, and the tree coming towards you, and be lying the right way, you mm. should stand clear, and you know, you're all right. But if he's lying the wrong way, they jump clear. It was a weird thing, that way. Yeah, the, these these photographs were taken by Roy Lambeth, and uh, the next photograph along is is a is a nine F, uh, nine nine two zero four three, is it? Oh, well, Roy, Roy Lambeth was uh, from Durham City, <coughs> and he used to uh, come up to Durham Station and when the steam was on, taking photographs from when he was a boy. And I, I used to see him when I went there, he was a grown up, uh, grown up right there, and he still went around taking his photographs, and he's famous for it now, Roy. He was dedicated to taking them photographs, he's a brilliant mm. fella. Uh, it d don't look too in too bad of uh, condition that nine it. All right, it's a little oh. bit of. Uh, well, I think in, in that it, 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 I think they started in 1956 and they were finished and within 10 years or gone and uh, mm. I don't know when they were built. Maybe in the 50s, wasn't it? Mm. And the uh, French team knows all about them. Like I'm re reading his comments on it, so I don't know, you know. Is, right, this, this next photograph has is, is got the, you can just make out a couple of iron ore wagons behind this 9F. Uh, it's, it's more or less in the same um, spot because you can make out the, the signal box and the amount of smoke and steam belching out of this thing. Oh well that's when he, he's just past uh, Bank Top and he's on a way that you can still see Green Lane in the, in the middle, can't you? Yeah, yeah, you can. Ah, yeah. uh, well, that, well, that's just the same nine F. But when he took that one, and when he got past Green Lane, he took a second shot as he was going underneath the bridge, and he got he used to take shots like that of the, the engines from all angles. He, he great lad, Royally. Right, right. Hmm. Uh, right. This next photograph. Um, is, is, is that a little J90 pulling a lot of MCB wagons? Looks like it. Oh, that one, no, no that's, uh, just one just of the, yeah. that's a, that, that was a Corey engine, a Ford and Corey. Yeah, yeah. And they used to mix, I think they used to mix the coal, and uh, they used to 
spring cool from Gordon Curry to, um, into the pits and shields, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and mix a coal or something. And they, anyway, they used to go to the tank outside and some board and coal. And West Road Pit wasn't far away, I think. They used to just mix a coal. That's what I heard, right? Oh, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a li little steam engine, it was that one. Mm -hmm. Right. Right, so, my favourite photograph that you've you sent me is this Deltic. It must be thundering along there. <laughs> well, I, I mean, well, I was thinking about that uh, French team, you know, I was thinking about uh, the time it was coming in at Houston Junction, and I wanted to show Houston Junction because it's not a bad run in, really, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's about two cross of roads coming in, mm -hmm. and you would, you would get in there comfortably at 40 miles an hour, mm -hmm. and of course, that, he's passing on the main line, and you can see the junction uh, coming through there, mm -hmm. and also, on the, on the right, you see the concert branch. Yeah. You see? Yeah, it veers off, yeah. Well, if you remember I was telling you about the um, signalman there, he, he, he had jack points uh, towards South Pillar, mm -hmm. and he had a runaway train, oh, and of right. course, he didn't know whether the, of course, he, he must have been associated past Anfield, uh, South Pillar must be getting a runaway train signal, and of course, he passed it straight on to Tango, he had just had a phone time and tell him that and he hasn't got much time to think, maybe a few, five minutes to go make his mind up when he's going to turn the point or let him run. But uh, what, what he'd have to do, uh, if you look at uh, Houston Junction, he'd have to stop them trains like that. He, that EP would have been stopped at uh, Chester, you see. Mm -hmm. And then any other trains would have to be stopped at the box. And then there had been no trains on the slow. Well, it was a hard thing to do, you know, because uh, there's always trains not going to bother you. And of course there must have been trains in the vicinity and of course he, he realised he couldn't do it and he turned the point and caught one. As, to, as soon as the fire, I heard it, as soon as the fireman and the, the driver seen the points were lying towards the, the runoff, you know, it's like a big hole. And of course it jumped and went fairly badly injured. Mm -hmm. But the guard was killed, the guard was killed, you see, because the whole train piled on on top of him, you know, he's just in his van, right, yeah. and, uh, and he, w he wouldn't be able to see the points, eh? but he was killed, you see, but that was just an incident there that happened, and uh, mm -hmm. I would have felt bad if it happened to me, like, you know, mm -hmm. and then killed, killed the van, like that. Right, so, talking about incidents, we're moving on to the HST that had um, come off the tracks there. Now, now, I've never heard of HST coming off the tracks. Now, this was at Berkeley, apparently. Well, it was on the slow. You see, well, I should, there's that, that, there the line that you can see coming to Houston Junction. Mm -hmm. And you see the line coming down, and what it does, it, it straightens up, and then it comes around and drops around, the, it's got tiny yards of wide yard, mm -hmm. come right around the bend, and it looked to me, of course, I wasn't going that it happened. It was just after it happened, oh, come on, we're seeing all the ones and the passengers getting out the train, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I think it was towards the points, uh, the reception points, you know, because the train passed over them and uh, something must have happened. They the, the road must have spread and he, all the centre of the train uh, derailed and went over the bank. And uh, of course the, the rear power car was derailed, but he didn't fly over the bank right. And uh, we could see the passengers standing, and uh, they, w they went across, as far as I know, of course they were busy on the phones there now, because the main line was actually stopped. The reason for the train going down the shore, there was a failure on the main. Oh, right. so, and of course that's what you do, you run them down the shore. Well it's just unfortunate that way. That happened, and of course, what they do, well, the main line was blocked. Both roads were blocked on the main line, and of course, they got the, apparently they got the, I, we've never seen this, but they got the passengers across to the chemical works, and they trapped them there and sent for the ambulance. But when we come on, me and my mate, uh, it just it hadn't happened, it happened wrong, you know. But these lads on the early shift had seen it coming down, like, 
but all we had to do after that was to uh, get the rank cleared and get the two power cars away, you know, and a few and a few courses that were left, and get in the course of the police got, uh, I think it was 27 people, they were bundled over the top, if you look at their photographs, the, the, the colleges, you know, were thrown over the top, and there was to be bouncing on the right, but the door was in there, but they started to praise the condition of the, of the, of the, of the uh, wagons, you know, the, the colleges that were safe, mm -hmm. but the thing is, they we've been travelling at 80 miles an hour, well, that would be different, I suppose, but he was only travelling at... It, what he used to do is to come in there and he'd just see them paddling along at 40 miles an hour. They wouldn't have it go any faster and out the dust. And it was unfortunate that happened. And uh, the, the 27, some of them were badly injured, but of course, but, but the trouble was, uh, before that, there was a, 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 fair, uh, a disaster in Scotland, you see, and 17 people were killed. And then there was another crash on the bend at Morpeth. This is only the top of my head, I heard that. And this was the third one, you know. Right, and of sure. course, they were on about the, uh, the, you know, the clear wall, the railway wasn't safe at that way, you know. So that was it. Mm. And so. Mm. The time period between these three incidents, the three, three derailments that you were saying, what, what, what are we talking about? Was it over a year or, or just...? Well, uh, what it was, it was 1984, I think, and of course the first one at Scotland, there was deaths, there were 17 people killed and a bad one there, mm -hmm. because it might have been speed there involved. And the second one was on the more, the, is it Morbus Curve. Right. He come off the road there, I don't know if people were killed or not. And then a few, a week or two later, I think as far as I know, it was only a month or so, or maybe a bit more, and the, oh, the one happened at Tain Yard as well. Mm. But we started panic after that, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, I bet, I bet. Three, uh, three instances so within a month, so, yeah. <laughs> right, so we're, we're moving on to the the last set of photographs, which we, have, we spoke about a little bit uh, in earlier on in the video, about these unusual torpedo trains, you call them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you can tell us a bit about these? Well, it's the hot metal. They call them the hot metal trains. That's what we were. Well, the, Robert was probably... I wonder if Robert's seen them. He was, used to work on that area in that, about 1975. Have he seen those trains? Because I think they finished in 76. He might have seen them. Mm. But uh, he used to leave a uh, red car on a cargo fleet. Mm -hmm. there, there was a blast furnace there, and they used to team them in the top and seal them up. And then they used to bring them up with a couple of diesel, I think the 37s they looked at me, they were, they were pulling them. And of course, what well, the years were on this probably um, uh, three something, you know, X something X, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's all it was. But if you look at the, the, the stadium, the, um, there's two, and there's. Uh, I don't know, it seems a weird combination, you know, that's wrong with the two engines in the front, the two torpedoes. Mm -hmm. I think there was car, some sort of dynamic car, I think, was there, whatever the car was, was there, I don't know, oh. you know. So I tell you what, that, that would be a, an interesting build for me. All I need to make something similar to that is um, four, four sets of tenders again. I could, I could, I could, I could yeah, probably make, uh, make that. I could probably make that. Well, you try them, Tony. If you, when you've got the photos, you may be able to just like, they are like torpedo things, aren't they, really? Mm. Like? Yeah. Well. But I'm sure some of the real real arts have some, I don't know, uh, know more than me about them, like probably Robert's seen them and he's probably known where they, what happened to them. Mm. And of course, French Steel, he, he's a driver, he probably knew some of the drivers that, uh, that uh, had them, you know. Mm. So you'll get a few replies on that one. I think so. Uh, right, well. John, we've had some interesting uh, subjects to talk about this week. Uh, is there anything you'd like to add before well, we go? Uh, Peter Jones uh, wanted to, he asked me if I knew anything about the trains on the, the Hilton line, you know, from uh, Sunderland all the way through to uh, Cox Green that way and on there. But 
I didn't work on that way, and I, I, I mentioned that in my work that only one cabin on the Depot branch called uh, Ogden's Lane. What I've seen on the, uh, you, on the was it YouTube, mm -hmm. there was a thing called Trains. It's like an animated thing. All right, and yes. It was, it, it, there was a train from, uh, with a block five with a, a load of parcels traveling from Sunderland to Leamside. And it went through Sunderland and swung right past Fawcett Street Junction, which I knew that area. And then it, it went right through uh, past where his father used to work. It was like a, a, a paper mill there, you know, South Hilton paper, paper mill. And you've seen right. the paper mill and you've seen the lines going in. It was only animated right away through the leaf side. So I would recommend anybody who watch that. It's really good. It impressed me anyway. All right. So what, what I'll do, John, I'll, I'll look that up. And I'll, and I'll put a link um, in the comments and uh, if anybody wants to watch watch that uh, they, they can it's it's trains it's a railway simulator um, I, I, used to, I, used, yeah, I used to have that myself many years ago before I uh, decided to build a model railway I wanted the real thing see well not quite the real thing but it's close <laughs> well there was a, another one as well Tony from uh, South Dock All right. it went through Rye up and the way I used to work, uh, past Ryer uh, Station there, and went right away up, and it went there, that went all the way through to Merton, which was on the Wellfield branch. And that was realistic and all. You could see uh, South Dock as it was, you know. Uh, hey, it's the same fella, he, he's, a, he's a magician, this fella. I, I forget his name now. Hmm. But it's excellent, Tony. I, I recommend him, too. All right, okay. Right, John, I think that's all we got time for this week. Uh, it's been great having you once again. And uh, oh. we'll, we'll see you again next time. I think I'd better leave you alone, because I think you're going to be busy in that signal box, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Uh, <laughs> well, I've enjoyed it, Tony, and it's a bit chat. And uh, we'll get together, maybe I'll get a few comments uh, from, uh, from the real world lads about that um, hot metal train. And I'd like to learn more about them yourself, but now what's your button like, you know? Mm, all right, I'm sure, I'm sure.